Though Splatoon 3 Direct was incredibly hype, and for both myself and others, I could see nothing but positive reactions all around. Well, except for one thing. No! <laughs> Why? I got it back! No! No! no. no. Missiles! Dang it! No! No! And Inkjet! Okay, Inkjet no. and Storm. Oh no. no. The game is ruined. <laughs> it's like, like sounds like if you don't die instantly. Inkjet. No. no, Missiles. Ink Storm. What the f Bro, missiles are back. Missiles are back. No. Weapons. Oh, no. 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 That's so no. funny. Special weapons like the Tenta missiles, Inkjet. Not Tenta! That's Familiar it. Familiar special weapons like the Tenta no. missiles. No. No. What? No. What? No. 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 No oh no! Uh, I guess you don't. Have... What? Oh, uh, doom, doom, doom game, doom game. No, stop! No, <laughs> missiles no. are back. No. 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 I originally planned to do a video going over my thoughts on all the specials in Splatoon 3 since there's about 15 of them. And if you want to see that video, you should definitely consider subscribing. But for now, I wanted to go over Tenna Missiles because this was by far the most negative reaction that we've ever had. What makes the special different to the other 14 in the game? Why do people dislike it? And can it be fixed in time for Splatoon 3? Let's get into it. The first trait Tenna Missiles is hated for is its global range. And while this was something that was more common in Splatoon 2, it was a bad trait on pretty much every special that had it. This type of special design has been mostly abandoned in Splatoon 3. The only other special that can reach across the entire stage is Killer Whale 5.1, which has a small hexagon radius in order to even lock on people in the first place. Other specials that used to have global range, like the Echo Locator and Ink Strike, have been reworked in this game to where they have a much more limited range, allowing them to be much more back and forth with the user. Global specials have a lot of problems. It's annoying to get hit by something across the stage that you basically can't interact with, it encourages special spamming since you don't have to be near people in order to use it, and and arguably most importantly, it builds bad habits as a player because you're not being taught to capitalize off of the special since the further back you go, the easier it is to lock on to multiple people. If you compare these with the specials I mentioned previously, they just don't follow the same design. Tri-Strike requires you to see your opponents and has a limited throwing range, and Echo Locator not only has a limited range itself, but can also be jumped over to be avoided. I think part of the reason this looks even worse for Tenna Missiles than before is because pretty much every other special doesn't have this global range. This is the only one that could really act like this, which makes it indirectly even better than it was in Splatoon 2, where it's already a meta-defining special. Contributing to the back and forth is the auto-lock nature of it. If a Tenna Missile user has you in their sights, they can very easily target you and there's basically nothing you could do about it. Even versus something like Killer Whale, well, you could hide behind a wall and they'd have to guess where you are, while Tenna Missile just lets you see people through it. This only adds to the feeling that you don't really have any control over what happens to you from the special. The third factor is the ability to easily displace the entire team. Now, a lot of specials in Splatoon force you to move, but they don't necessarily force everyone to move. If we take a look at Inkstorm, another returning Splatoon 2 special, this only forces people out of a very specific area, and with the weak damage, you don't really have to move that much if you're not in immediate danger. By contrast, Tenda Missiles can force everyone to move, even if they're fairly split up depending on where they're used. This especially hurts slower weapons and makes things like rotation and speed become far more important than they really have any right to be. And finally is their spammability. Missiles are really easy to farm because right after you use one, you can immediately start charging another. You can even use certain strategies like throwing a suction bomb, then popping missiles so the suction paint can charge your next one. In Splatoon 2, missiles is the most spammable special in the game, and even at top level play, we commonly see B-Jet, a weapon that's only made to spam paint and missiles at a distance, frequently getting incredibly low kills or having much impact on the game outside of its special output. That is allowed to be good because of this special. And again, other specials have been like this in the past, but all of the other ones have been changed, such 
such as Ink Harbor being reworked to Tactic Cooler, which gives buffs and you have to go in a specific area in order to get them rather than having to deal with the global range. Missile sticks out like a sore thumb because it's the only special that hasn't gotten these changes. This is easily and by far the most non-interactive special that forces the most displacement in the game, is the most spammable, and feels like you can do the least against. Now I can hear what you guys are thinking. Well, they reworked and fixed a bunch of other specials, why can't they fix missiles in Splatoon 3? And well, while I do think they can make them better, think of the amount of things you would have to take away from missiles to make it well designed. The range, auto-locking, team displacement, spam ability. If you got rid of all of these, would the special even feel the same? And more importantly, would it even be good? I think the only thing the devs can do at this point, unless if they decide to fully remove the special, which will never happen, is they have to try to pick some of these things to get rid of and keep some of the others. So how would I personally fix Tena Missiles? The first factor and most important one I would pick to take away is the global range. This is the worst part about its design, especially compared to all the other Splatoon 3 specials, and I think you can still keep it functional while getting rid of it. So instead, I think the range should be about that of E-Leader. This would mean there's some situations you can avoid them, they're less spammable, you can't use them as far away, so it builds a bit of better habits. It doesn't fix all of these problems completely, but it makes it way better. Next, I would make it so you can only lock onto three targets max, so you can't displace the entire team, and this would also fit very well with, you know, Splatoon 3's theme of having a lot of threes for their things. Fixing spammability is actually the easiest part of the special. I would simply make it so you can't charge missiles until all of them have landed, which also has the nice perk of if you're using missiles from a far away distance, it's going to take longer to farm the next one. Last step would be fixing the auto lock, and this is something that I think I can't do. In theory, what I'd want to try is something where if you get locked on by missiles, you have to be in line of sight, and if you go behind a wall for more than a second, the missiles will go away from you. I find this change important because it gives options to the player actually fighting the missile, but at that point, this special just sucks. <laughs> I think with three out of four of these changes, the special would still be pretty solid, and I don't exactly think it should be good or even top tier with how poorly designed it is. It's unfortunate because missiles do have some redeeming qualities. I think they're actually fairly fun to use, and I like the dynamic between trying to choose who to target and if you target less people, more missiles go on them. Even if missiles aren't really changed that much, it wouldn't ruin the game, but it's just sad because we have 15 specials and 14 of them are average at worst, with most of them being amazing examples of great special design. It by far surpasses Splatoon 1 and 2, and we got to see so many of the specials from those games reworked into a lot better ones, but regardless of what they do to it, Tena Missiles will stick out as a sore thumb and a reminder of the stuff we used to deal with constantly in the previous games. I hope the devs can somehow prove me wrong, and I'm interested to hear your guys' thoughts in the comments. Sorry for the negative video, but we had to get this one out of the way. Next up, I'm going to talk about all the other specials in Splatoon 3, and I promise I have a lot of positive things to say about them, and a lot of them were done super well. So stay tuned for that, and I'll see you guys then.